Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show on Facebook where we show you one cool thing which we are testing out in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Matt Buzzy, and this is just lovely, isn't it? What, 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 what is so beautiful here? This is the Razorblade Stealth, which is not the first time we're seeing this. Right, as you right. may know, uh, as viewers may know, as I'm sure you know. Um, this came out, I think, just last year this only debuted, but I feel like I've seen several iterations of it already. Good processor ramp ups or what have you. This is the first one with like an exterior change that you might actually notice right away, which is to say a larger screen. Mm-hmm. Thirteen point so three inches now. Thirteen point three. Yes. The previous one was an even thirteen. It was a twelve and a half. Twelve. Twelve. So point, a okay. of, but achieved by not actually making the laptop any bigger. Those mm -hmm. those pesky uh, those pesky bezels are thinner than before. I do love the trend of reducing bezels. Yes. Uh, who who really needs a bezel? Bezels are bezels are bad. But uh, let's let's look at the Razorblade Stealth twenty seventeen. Uh, the new refresh yes. of Razer's um, thin and light gaming laptop. Yeah, so this is the ultra portable line, not the gaming laptop, as um, you may be familiar with. Assuming you may assume that it's a gaming laptop because that's, Razer mm -hmm. stuff is mm -hmm. all mostly gaming. This is their ultra portable line. No, no discrete graphics inside. Oh, no discrete graphics. Okay, I take it back. I take it yeah, back. Yeah. I wanted to say gaming because it's Razer. Because it's Razer. No. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, this is the do it all, bring it with you ultra portable that has nothing to do with gaming, mm -hmm. um, unless you want to hook it up to their peripheral, the Razer Core, which you could put a desktop GPU in and just plug it on in. That way, when you're home and you're done traveling. It's now a gaming system. At your, and there at your are desk. desktop GPUs approximately the size of this laptop. Yes, I think. factual. Yeah. 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 Um, and so yeah, so this is it weighs 2.9 pounds. Um, it's super thin. Oh, man. It has uh, yeah, it's like half an inch thick. It has a uh, USB C. It has um, USB three on this side, uh, another USB 3, and HDMI so you can connect into the monitor when you're home, mm -hmm. especially if you're using the core, if you are going to use it as a gaming system. Uh, that way you don't have to play on a 13-inch screen when you're at your desk. Is that USB-C a Thunderbolt? It is. Thunderbolt 3, that's what you would hook the, um, the external uh, graphics thing up to as well. Um, and it's also the charge port. So you're really going to want, I mean, you're really going to want or need some kind of dock for this because you want to proliferate that one USB-C into charging, into high-speed storage, yeah. possibly into video out. Like, that one USB-C is going to have to do a lot of yeah. work. The only, yeah, the only thing you wouldn't need the power for is if you're using the uh, graphics amplifier because it'll provide power through that. But mm -hmm. other than that, yeah, you can't charge and use the USB-C. That's like one of the few cons about this thing, which is really minor inconvenience for however long you want to plug in a, a peripheral yeah. and, and use and, it. And for, for using it, for using it on your desk, we have reviews of several perfectly good USB-C docks, yes. which are really what you should be using with any of these, you know, MacBook Pros, this thing, HP Spectre, mm -hmm. that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, and especially the ones that strand you with only USB-C, which mm -hmm. this does not do. It gives you regular USB. Um, jump back to the other components. What else is going on yeah. in here? It's $13.99 base that comes with... Um, all of them have 16 uh, gigabytes of memory and uh, Core i7 7500U. So it's not a newer processor. It's the same one that was in the late 2016 uh, mm -hmm. Blade Stealth. But there hasn't also really been new processors in the past year. So they're not really missing much. Um, there's going to be a KB Lake R version mm -hmm. of this coming out, which is a slightly revamped model. Um, so you get an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and the base model is 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. You can go all the way up to a terabyte of SSD storage if mm. you want to pay nearly $2,000. OK, uh, let's take some questions. How can I convince my boss that I need this for work? How much do you travel? You get out of the office, hey, I want to lug this business laptop around. It's ugly, and people are giving me, giving me looks. Not that, well, it's, it's not, just, not just about it being ugly. Yeah, like, no. over time, especially if you're getting a little older, you know, carrying a heavy business laptop can create serious problems for your back and your neck. Of course. If you're carrying it everywhere you go. Uh, from an HR ergonomics health perspective, yeah, you yeah, may yeah. need a lighter laptop to carry around on your business trips for your health so that the company does not have to pay for your chiropractor in the future. So See, true. I did it for you. Perfect. Yeah, never mind that standing desk. I'll take a hit. I'll, I'll say at my sitting desk, just get me this laptop. That's all exactly, I want. Exactly. Exactly. Um, the display is super nice also. Uh, so, you know, eye strain, that's another thing. You don't want to stare at that 720p or 1080p display on your business laptop. No. No, sir. Uh, this is a QHD+. Plus. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's touch. It's, uh, it's touch. It's touch. Man. You can touch it even. Uh -huh. um, 3200 by 1800 resolution, uh, Exo technology. So the colors are really vibrant. Um, it's super sharp. It's one of the nicest displays I think I've seen on laptop, just generally. Um, so now, uh, people are, of course, going to ask about gaming. Sure. What, uh, what are the capabilities in here for gaming, if that is a thing that one does? Being integrated graphics, the capabilities are pretty low. OK. Uh, as an ultra portable, pretty much every ultra portable, save for like the high end, um, Surface stuff that now has discrete graphics in it because they're crazy. Mm -hmm. um, 
is uh, they're all integrated graphics. So these are for this is for travel. It's for doing multitasking. It's for doing work. It can handle mm -hmm. some smaller media projects because it's not a you know workstation. But um, gaming wise, you know, simple stuff. You want to take stick with your Hearthstones. Stick with your Minecraft. Stick with your older games running at not full specs. Uh -huh. uh, you're probably I mean 30 frames per second. Anything relatively new would be definitely a struggle unless you turn the graphics settings way down. So how about how about battery life before we get to more questions? A uh, battery life was. Good, not amazing. It was eight hours. Um, that's running on this really high res screen, which drains it faster. Um, if it's you know if there's 4K, that's even more drain. We see that across the board. So that just comes with the territory. Eight hours is is pretty all day. And um, I would say like if you if you travel really long distances with a laptop like this, um, a USB C based Anchor 20,000 battery pack. Then you won't have to think about battery ever. Yeah, you won't ever have to worry about battery again. Now that does make your bag a little heavier, but you can put the battery pack into your rolling bag as opposed to your shoulder bag or your yep. backpack. And if you have like a phone that you want to charge on that thing too anyway, you're going to like that doubles as, it's a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. Those. Let's take another question. What kind of software does it have preloaded? Someone's wondering about bloatware. Um, there's not too much. It's pretty good. Um, there's the Razer Synapse stuff which you're going to want anyway because of this glowing individually backlit keyboard. Uh, every key is lit on its own, so you can change the color uh, or effect of every key or have this sort of constant fade pattern or have ripples or waves. Um, and so the Synapse software that comes with it, which is where you also where you customize, like, you know, uh, you can change the now, commands can the keys and input. tell me things? Could I have, like, the E light up <laughs> if I have email? I don't think so. OK, OK. I don't mm -hmm. think it does that. Uh, there is a keyboard that does that, though, a, a desktop keyboard. Yeah, I think um, I've seen it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it just has the Synapse stuff. Other than that, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty tame. Um, I don't think, from, uh, to my knowledge, uh, other than the stuff that comes on like every Windows, Windows laptop. Windows 10 Pro? Um, just Windows 10. Oh, okay. Um, there is, I'm just checking through. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it was Razer's one program, really. OK, uh, great. That's and and good. you need it to operate the keyboard. And you want so it, yeah, you want it on legit. there anyway. That's yeah. legit. That's not bloat. Uh, another question. How fast is it start up? Um, pretty quick. It's an SSD, so like a couple seconds, you're, you're, you're logged in. Um, mm -hmm. I can I can I can do that for you while we're yeah. while we're chatting. Why not? You're gonna reboot it. I'll just hit restart. Yeah, okay. So we'll restart. Yeah, run, run the timer. Then I then I want to close it and I want to show kind of how really how thin and light it is while sure. closed. Sure. Um, while while this is happening, I can say there are other versions of this now too. So it's 13.3 inches for the first time. Um, there's also a gunmetal version for the first time. So instead of the logo is green that made on out the of back, actual guns. It is. It is made of actual guns. Yeah. No. Um, okay. So the restart is starting now. Okay. Um, now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're pretty yeah, much under you're 10 seconds. In. Under 10 Back seconds. To the and then any additional time is Windows figuring itself out, which everybody's going to have. Yes. So, yeah. Look. Didn't like. So, so yeah. There's a gunmetal version where the um, the logo is silver. If you don't like the the green. Um, you can have a bit more subdued. Uh, that's a cool option. The keyboard on that, somewhat strangely, is not mm -hmm. chroma. It's just mm -hmm. white backlighting on the gunmetal one. Uh, there's fans in here. Do they create a? Do they? Get it's actually nice problem? and quiet. Um, unlike okay. the gaming laptop blade, which understandably is doing more because it's a gaming right. laptop. It gets hot. Those fans are loud. It's the same size and shape as these, but mm -hmm. it really wears up. I really didn't hear this one at all. Okay. Stealth, you know? Yeah, they, that's they gotta live up to, They gotta live up to the name. Let's take another one. Is this the best looking laptop on the market? Um, it's definitely up there. I feel like the if you want to go a little more businessy, a little more professional, the XPS 13 is uh, super mm -hmm. nice and premium. It's like the carbon fiber keyboard deck, like the metal uh, lid you can get with the gold. Uh, the HP Spectre is a super mm -hmm. nice looking laptop. And I mean, I would have to say the MacBook Pros are gorgeous. Yeah, the MacBook Pros. Yeah, are, the MacBook Pros knows. are gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it depends on taste too. Um, some people may not like the logo or the lime green, but you can get the silver one if that's mm -hmm. if that's you. Another question. Can it do VR? No. No. No gaming. Uh, that so integrated no VR. graphics. That integrated graphics is going to yes. is is going to is going to bork your VR. But on the other hand, you know, you can at home have a USB C dock hooked up with ninety six ports on it and one of those external Razer Core graphics monsters. Yep. And then you uh, got a gaming system. When you're How home. much does the Razer Core cost? The Razer Core is four ninety nine, I believe. Okay, so at least it costs less than buying an additional desktop PC. Yeah, altogether. But then you do have to buy a card if you want to buy a high end one. You could be looking at like six hundred, seven hundred dollars. So now we're getting to the point where so we, it's we like we a might thousand start. plus anyway. So now you're <laughs> just building your low end yeah. gaming PC. But anyway. you don't need to buy a processor. You don't need to buy a monitor. Obviously, this can come with you. Which if you build a desktop, mm -hmm. it would not. So there's options. Okay, another question. Where can someone get this? Is it just through Razer? I believe it's just on Razer's website. Yeah, uh, they make it easy. It's a, it's a nice little drop down. It's like stealth, and then the amount of storage you want and the color you want. Mm -hmm. Gunmetal. It comes with 
as I said, 256 base, but you can get 512 gigabytes of SSD storage or a terabyte of SSD now we've storage. Now, we've got speakers flanking the keyboard here. How are they? They're pretty good. Um, they don't get super loud, but you also probably don't know how far you're going to be from a 13.3-inch screen. Probably about this not, close. Not, yeah, not mm. very. Um, they're loud, and the quality is actually pretty good. Um, so it wasn't one of those like tinny distortion things at max mm -hmm. volume. Even if the max volume was tamed like, a little bit, uh, it's probably worth it for not screeching at you. Yeah, yeah. Another question. How does it grip? Like, do you feel nervous holding it with one hand? Or? No. Um, when it's on its surface, these rubber feet do a great job. Um, and when you're holding it, it's not slippery. This material is it, matte. Yeah. This material yeah. is fingerprint. Um, it has a fingerprint problem. Yeah, it's fingerprinty. Um, it, it'll definitely fingerprint up, but it's not. It doesn't feel slippery. Um, yeah. It, it's pretty easy to grip. Another question. Keep them coming. What's the difference between this and another recently released laptop, the Aorus X9? Oh boy. Um, the Aorus X9, I mean, those are about as opposite end of the spectrum as you could go. Uh, the Aorus X9 is a dual SLI uh, <laughs> GTX 1070 SLI 17-inch uh, laptop from Aorus um, that I'm testing right now. And um, it is very big. <laughs> it's very big, but it's actually pretty thin for a dual SLI laptop. Uh -huh. it's, it's barely, it's like an inch thick. Uh -huh. um, it only weighs eight pounds. So for a, it only weighs eight only pounds. Weighs eight pounds. So it only weighs two and a half times yeah. what this laptop weighs. Um, but yeah, that, and that's it's three thousand something dollars. So so other than so, that, so the answer is it. The the answer is the Aorus weighs two and a half times as much, costs at least twice as much, mm -hmm. and has the power of a. Yes. And gaming desktop speaking PC. Speaking of size, I did mention the other color option, but there is also still the 12.5 inch version available. If you want it, it is only 4K. Is it less expensive? It is, I don't know. I don't think so because the screen's 4K. Is so it it's lighter? Like, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a little smaller. Okay, okay. Another question. Maybe not. Would you recommend this over a MacBook Pro? Um, it depends what you want to do, really, and what programs you need. OS um, Wars. Yeah, the OS, the classic OS Wars. Um, Plus, there's some Iris graphics in the MacBook Pros. You get a little more, little more juice out of your, out of your graphics. Um, it really depends what you want to do. This is a little more portable. It's a little thinner. Um, it's a little lighter. It's um, you're probably the, the equivalent models of the MacBook Pro could be maybe a little pricier. Um, though, actually, 1399. I think that's the same base. That's the base. MacBook Pro, that's the yeah. base. So um, you know, trade off. It's really an OS thing. Um, if you know you don't want. Apple, or you're looking to switch off it, uh, this mm -hmm. is you know one of the best options that you can take with you anywhere. Um, that really does come down to OS preference. In the yeah, end. I was yeah I, I was gonna say more you know this or like a Spectre 13. Yeah, that's kind of that that's kinda, that's my question. It was this the Dell or the X because the last one we reviewed of this actually was for our price pricing ranges. We called that more of a mid range, but this is more of a high end because the base on that was like 1200, 1250. Mm -hmm. This being 1400, that's a little that's a gap. You know, mm -hmm. that's 250 mm -hmm. whatever extra dollars. Um, so. Compared to a slightly different system, like you said, the XPS, the Spectre are the kind of, mm -hmm. do I want this? Do I need the convertibility of the Spectre? Which is nice for like plane trays and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, in table tent mode, watch a movie. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I've been doing on planes. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, there's a couple of Do you options. actually do the table tent thing on planes? I did, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Um, I not, not the tent mode, but the, the keyboard facing down and the screen mm -hmm. facing up at you. Mm -hmm. um, because... That way, if the person reclines in front of you, or so if the seat back's just too steep, mm. it isn't up against the back of the seat. It's towards you. That's a good. That's a good idea. Yeah. Actually, as, I was like, oh wait, this has functionality. As the phone guy, I have to admit, I watch movies on my phone. Mm. Like okay. I just load all the movies. I just load all the movies onto my phone and watch sense. movies on yeah, my no, phone. But the I'm the phone guy. Thirteen-inch so laptops fit right in that little tray. Yeah. And if yeah. it can convert, it's it's a good combo. Let's take another question. How do you like the touchpad? It's actually super nice. Uh, it's metal. It's really smooth. I have good zero, palm rejection. Zero complaints. Kind of yeah. big. A little so, larger, not as quite as hilariously large as the some of the as MacBook. the Mac trackpads, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can you can test drive it too. No, it feels uh, it feels super nice. Um, it's really smooth. The keys as well. I think it could be my imagination, but I think there's a little more travel than there was in the last version. I mean, I, there's definitely more travel than there is on the Mac. Oh yeah, no, which, is, which is to say none. Yeah. Um, yeah, it feels like you're actually typing on keys, which is a really nice change of mm. pace. We have another question. How good is the battery life? Uh, it lasted for eight hours on a rundown test, so good, not great, um, fine. Adequate. You're not going to um, not going to be frustrated by it. Yeah, but if I you're mean, on when I hear eight hours on the rundown test, and I think about like doing actual work on it in a day, it feels like uh, if if I'm doing a day where I have a morning flight to the West Coast, mm. um, it's gonna start petering out towards the end of that flight. Possibly. Basically, yeah. like I power it up in the airport, I do a couple of things, and then I get on the flight to LA, and then like somewhere over Utah, I start uh, you're like monitoring it. You're kind of looking at it. You're exactly. Giving it some side eye, like, do I have enough? So yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. 
I wish it was more like 10. Uh, like some of the com competitions, more like 10 hours. Um, the MacBook Pro is like 16, something ridiculous on the same test. Um, so you know that is that is one of the cons Rel mm. relative to other laptops mm. in this category. But at least it's not four. It's not four. Uh, the Aorus X9 <laughs> was um, a, maybe a new low at one hour and ten minutes. One hour, one and, hour ten and, minutes? and ten minutes. And that's what happens <laughs> if you try to run dual SLI, four K screen, four K screen yeah. off a battery. Yeah, no, no bueno. Yeah, uh, another okay. question. Is this considered a super ultrabook? This is what we call ultra portable now. I think it's been the kind of general term. Uh, people still say ultra book sometimes. I don't know about super. They're thinner and lighter things. Yeah, ultra book was an Intel trademark, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we we try to we've been trying to move away from that yeah. trademark into a more generic set of terms. Yeah. As far as as far as a super one, um, there are some thinner and lighter things out there. For if, if we're saving that adjective for like the thinnest and lightest yeah, things out yeah. there. The LG Gram, which weighs like nothing but is is you know feels like it a little more. It's it's a little it's a little more flimsy. Right. Um, that one it, that one almost feels like it flexes. Yeah. The uh, the Spectres is maybe a super that's what it called super thin. Yeah. This does not flex by the way. Solid metal. Solid, Very solid like metal a rock. here. Yeah. Another question. Can you just reiterate what the processor was? It is a Core i7 7500U I think at 2.7 gigahertz. Uh, so that is the last gen KB Lake, not KB Lake R. Um, it's the same one that was in the last laptop, so the performance was almost identical to the tw late 2016 uh, Blade Stealth. Um, mm -hmm. There are, there is going to be a KB Lake R version of this coming out. They just announced. So, but is that going to really get you anything? It's, it's going. It is the thing. Like I was, I was wondering, oh, because this is this is our editor's choice. This is our favorite. This is our top pick for ultra portable because, in part of the price, because it's in that high range, but it's still three hundred dollars less than the mm -hmm, XPS. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really good value, but this KB Lake R1 is starting at like sixteen ninety nine, so the value isn't as, as arguable. So at that point, I might go with an XPS or I might go with the mm -hmm. Spectre or whatever it is, um, or the MacBook, depending what you want. Um, so the, the pricing of this really sells it. Yeah, I think I think that's just like the Intel supply tail wagging the. Yeah, I, I'm almost I'm almost wondering why they're bothering with, with KB Lake R. It's going to be slightly better, and then Coffee Lake is in desktops now, and it's right. going to be on the way eventually. So it's next like, year. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Let's do another one. Another one. Are there vents on the bottom? There are. There's two fans. fans. And it ran pretty dang quiet. Um, pay no attention to our inventory. Sticker. They look like big fans, but they are yeah, not well, noisy. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another question. What's the maybe highest end game you could run on this? <sighs> Don't try to yeah, run stop games. games on it. Um, I'm stone. curious if PUBG at like at like 720p and on low, which you should maybe play on for competitive sake, blah blah blah. Uh -huh. People recommend you run that game on low settings because it helps your performance and every frame counts. Right, right. To that point, every frame counts. Don't play on an ultra portable. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if it could run because it's not the highest fidelity thing in the world. Uh, but actually, yeah. actually, the gaming questions do open up like the question of like Razer's brand has been so tightly associated with gaming for so many years. Mm -hmm. You know, mice, headsets, laptops, et cetera, et cetera. Why, you know, why go into products that aren't part of that gaming suite? God, you like, got to capture that market. You got to get that market. It's just brand awareness, I think. It's uh -huh. more people out there seeing this logo, more people knowing that they make products that you want to carry around and have with you. And if you buy, I think from their perspective, because of all the peripherals and things. But does it dilute their brand? I don't think so, because I think if you if you buy one of these and then you're like, hey, I'm going to get this matching mouse, I'm going to get this matching keyboard, and I think uh -huh. it's sort of like an ecosystem of Razer LED lights and uh, and sounds and, and, I guess and colors. The, yeah, and I guess the other idea is that like if you are like a gamer at home, mm -hmm. if you're somebody who's aware of Razerness, you know, at home, this is what you ask your boss to get you for the office. Right. And then your boss is confident that you will not be able to adequately play games, and yet you will feel, you know, warmly wrapped in the Razer ecosystem. Of course, yes. like a warm blanket. Another question. Another spec question. Is it 4K? Uh, this one is QHD plus, so it's close. It's 3200 by 1800 resolution. There is mm -hmm. a 4K model. Only the 12 and a half inch uh, version is 4K. So there is an option out there for you, but it is a little smaller. Okay. Any more questions out there? Wow. Well, I am glad that you. Um, oh, one well, more. Spoke too soon. <laughs> What's the logo on your shirt, Rosie? I forgot what I'm wearing. Uh, this is an Express shirt. This is an Express yeah. logo. Bro, so, this, this stream brought to you by Express, I guess. <laughs> no, no, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> they did not pay us they any did money. Not. They didn't. We are not in hawk to the Express. We're not. Okay. Uh, you asked, I answered. Yes, yes. 
this this stream was brought to you exclusively by, by PC Magazine Z Davis. PC Magazine <laughs> Davis Media. Um, but uh, yes, thank you all. We're I'm really glad that you folks were so interested in this laptop. It is beautiful. It works well. It is four and a half stars and, a half. and an editor's choice for mid-range high-end ultra portables. High end ultra portables. Yes. Okay, I'm getting all the facts wrong today, but That's Buzzy is on close it. Close enough. He's on it. It's on the borderline, if that helps you, the price range. It's close, you know. Okay. You can be excused. Uh, thank you all for watching. We will be back at 10 a.m. tomorrow for another One Cool Thing.